Hey guys, in this video we're going to look at Desmos and how we can use it to help us answer some questions on the new digital SAT. So on the right here on my screen, you could see if you've ever used Desmos, this is the graphing calculator. Um, and you could access it if you want to just play around with it on your own. You could go to desmos.com slash calculator. Of course, you could just Google it. You'll find it easily. But this is the kind of the default screen that you come to when you're on Desmos. And before we get into solving some questions from the SAT, let's just talk about some of the functionality uh, components to Desmos that we're going to need to know. So, of course, you could just kind of type in whatever you want. 3x minus 5 and you could see that that line 3x minus 5 is graphed there. Um, if you want to do an exponent, like if I want to make it 3x squared, I can hit the shift key on my keyboard and then I can hit the, the, the 6 key which is like the little up arrow thing which I'm sure you know how to do an exponent but that's how you do it. So shift and then 6 and it goes to that what's called a superscript and you could put a two, so 3x squared. And then if you just like hit the right arrow from here, it'll go down back to the normal level. So 3x minus four maybe is that. Okay, so that's how you just kind of start with graphing some basic functions in Desmos. If you want to add a new function, you could just click down here on the second line down and you could put in another function like y equals 4x minus one. And there's that. And you can see that the um, the graph automatically changes to a different color, typically. Um, you could change it if you want. I don't know why you would care to do that, but you could hit the settings button or that little, um, what do you call that? Yeah, the gear. And then you could click the color and you could change it, right? And it changes from green to orange to whatever the heck you want it to be. Okay, but that's not that, that important. Um, if you scroll, you could scroll by dragging. Obviously, that's easy. Um, but if you want to get back to the default zoom of this graph, you could just always hit this home button here and it'll go to the default, which was right there. Okay, so that's helpful if you're zooming out really far to see a graph that's not anywhere close to the origin. And if you're maybe scrolling like this and you need to just quickly get back to the start, you can just hit the home and it resets everything, which is really, really nice. Now, another thing that you can do is if you hit the the wrench there, you can change the settings. So if you, you know, just play around with this if you want, but if you don't want those little grids, grid lines, you could uncheck that and you could kind of see in the background there, it, it makes those disappear. Um, you could change the X axis and the Y axis. Um, so maybe instead of zooming it with the zoomed in plus sign and zoom out minus sign, if you want to manually change how far the X axis goes or the Y axis, you can change that here. You could even change the step of the axis. So watch, this is maybe important enough to, to really talk about. So if I zoom in, notice that you can't see, you know, one, two, three, four, all you see is zero and then five is the next number, but that would be changing the step. So if you check the wrench here, click the wrench, you could change the step to one and you could change the Y axis step to one. And that way you could see all the numbers. And if you don't want those little grids, grid lines, you could click, of course, like we already said, uncheck the minor grid lines. And this is kind of a nice way to see the graph. So I prefer that, of course, um, you could do whatever the heck you want. If you zoom it out, it makes them disappear, but you get the idea. So that's kind of the, the basics of Desmos. The other thing that I should mention is sometimes when we see equations on, a, on the SAT, like if we look at this second one down here, 64x squared plus bx plus 25 equals zero. Don't worry about the b for now, but if we were gonna type that into Desmos, and let's maybe even put a, a number in in place of that b. So if it was something like 64x squared, whoops, I totally messed that up. 64x, whoa, what's going on? x, there we go, squared. And then if it was just like plus 5x plus 25, now, if I hit equal zero, like they have there, I'm wondering if this is gonna do what I want it to do. Hmm, is there a graph there? 
I don't see anything graphed. Maybe I'm missing it. But as far as I zoom out, I don't see anything. And so what I want to do is I'm going to take away the equal zero. And notice that there's now a graph there. So sometimes if you type in the problem from the SAT exactly into Desmos, for whatever reason, it might not like it. And so my suggestion would be to either take away the equal zero at the end, which is usually what causes that to happen, or, um, well, that's that's a good way to do it. And if that works, then of course, you know, go for that. Uh, and now, yeah, we can see that it's a, it's a parabola. It's kind of hard to see it, but it's still like a U-shaped um, graph. And you can see the vertex there, the minimum point at the bottom, 0, 25. Um, that was just an example I made up, but yeah, that would be that problem. And why don't we use Desmos now in order to solve maybe this question here, the first one here. So it says in the XY plane, and that's a good hint to use Desmos because we're talking about a graph, a line with equation 2Y equals C for some constant C intersects a parabola at exactly one point. If the parabola has equation Y equals negative 2X squared plus 9X, what is the value of C? So Really quickly, we've got two equations. They're intersecting, but we want them to intersect in exactly one point. And so we're gonna be able to figure out the value of C such that these graphs intersect like they said in just one point. So why don't we start by just typing in, I'll, I'll do the parabola first, that quadratic equation. And it would be Y equals negative two X squared plus nine X. And another thing that I should say is in Desmos, if you want, you can pull open this keypad. And I think on the SAT, that might be the default setting so that you have this here. And I could even move myself so that you could see some of the, um, the functionality of this. You have numbers, you have exponents, you have square roots, things like that. And so you could always use that keypad there instead of manually typing it out on your own keyboard. So that's helpful too. Um, so anyway, let's go back to this problem. So we've got our first one. We see the parabola there. I can go back to the home default zoom if I want. And then I'll type in the other equation, which is a line, 2y equals c. So 2y equals c. And uh-oh, notice this little exclamation point. It's like an error. And this is an example of what Desmos doesn't like. So we typed in the equation just as we saw it, but for some reason, it's not really working. And notice what it says there. It says we only support implicit equations of x and y. So I take that to mean there's no x in this equation, so I need to add an x in. And you might say, well, I can't just add an x in, and that's true, but think about it. There's not any x's in it right now, so we could actually put in there c plus 0x, right? Because there's no x's in the equation, and so if I put 0x in there, zero times X is just zero. It doesn't change anything, right? So sometimes you're going to need to think like that and put in plus zero X. Um, but that's a rare problem where it doesn't happen too often, but that's what you would do there. So now notice that Desmo says that we can add a slider for C. So I'm going to tap that blue button on C and look what it does. It gives you this slider and this is so cool. This is one of the coolest features of Desmos. You can move it yourself to change the value of C to see what the graph would look like if C was, for example, five or seven. And you could see it moving up and up and up. Now, what are we gonna look for? Remember, we want these graphs to intersect at exactly one point. And so if I keep dragging this bigger and bigger, notice that that line is getting closer to the top of the parabola at the vertex there. And it seems like that's where it's gonna be able to intersect it in just one point. But notice that I've gotten as big as they'll let me get for C and I'm not there yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap on this number here, 10, and that's gonna allow me to change the range of C. And clearly I need it to be bigger than 10. So maybe I'll do something like up to 25. I don't know, I'm just guessing. And maybe the minimum I can make it just 10 because I know it has to be bigger than that. So this means C is between 10 and 25. And I'm gonna assume it's probably gonna be a whole number answer. Sometimes it's not, but usually it is. So I'm gonna put a step of one. That means it's just gonna go up by one every time instead of decimals like it was last time I was sliding it. And now I can hit enter. And you could see now that the slider is gonna go from 10 to 25. So let me drag it and we're gonna look for it to intersect in just one point. 
and uh oh it doesn't seem like it's intersecting it in just that one point notice that it's a little bit off still and so what I need to do is actually seems like it's going to be between 20 and 21 so what I can do is I can go back and I could change that step so that it's not a whole number anymore maybe it'll be like a, a half step so 0.5 and maybe that'll help so 20 doesn't work 20 and a half also doesn't work but it looks like our graph the vertex that we're looking to to line up with is just right between those two points right or those two numbers so if I go down from a half of a step to maybe a quarter 0.25 that's probably gonna work and so there we have it 20.25 and you can see that they intersect right there in that one point and if I even zoom in more drag this up you can see that it's definitely just intersecting it in that one point now there's of course other ways you could do this without Desmos but the point of this video and me showing you this example is just to show you that an example like this doesn't need to be solved in Desmos but it certainly could be and so you just need to know what to look for when you're using Desmos for these types of problems so that first one we got it's 20.25 now why don't we clear all these out you can just hit these X's and it'll get every get rid of everything and we'll go back to the the home default zoom and why don't we go over here and look for a new problem that we can solve in Desmos so we'll do this one next 64 X squared we already kind of looked at this one 64 X squared plus BX and you can see that it wants a slider which is good equals zero now remember the way I typed it in with that equal zero before it didn't really seem to work and you could see now that it's still not graphing it so this is where again we're gonna take out the equal zero and now it's okay it just needs that slider which is great so let's go and add that slider and it says in the question for which of the following values of B will the equation have more than one real solution now in the context of a quadratic like this a solution is an x-intercept so if it has more than one solution a real solution it just means it's gonna have two x-intercepts it's gonna cross this x-axis twice the question is which B value does that now you have two options you can take each answer and plug it in in place of B so you could just take out B here and put negative 91 and you could see what the graph does now we actually got lucky here because that first one we tried negative 91 we don't even need this slider anymore because look that graph does cross the x-axis twice that would be more than one real solution and therefore the answer is just a negative 91 now if you didn't plug in the answer like we did what you could have done of course is like we were gonna do before put that slider in and if you add the slider and change it um, let me zoom out so that we could kind of see the graph see it's way up there if you drag it it's not really moving much you might even not even be able to really see it moving but that's because these values for B that we need are big numbers so I'm gonna change the range again and I need it to be the smallest number is negative 91 so why don't I put negative 91 and then the biggest B value is 40 so I could type 40 and that would be the range of B and I could put a step of 1 here and that would allow us to to see what happens and you could see clearly that when we drag it to negative 91 it crosses the x-axis two times like we already saw and all the other numbers negative 80 that crosses it just one time and positive 5 I mean you get the idea this isn't gonna work right it's way up high it's off of our picture and 40 is as well okay so either way we still get the same answer it's a negative 91 hopefully you can see just another good example of a good way to use Desmos to get an answer very very quickly if you did this problem using um, algebraic methods without a calculator it would just take you a little bit longer unless you're really really confident in using maybe the quadratic formula the discriminant things like that now why don't we just take a look at maybe one more question um, this is just another kind of similar type of problem but it's another one that we can use Desmos for so we'll get rid of these and go back to the home zoom um, and here's another example where it says that they intersect at exactly one point so we're gonna do essentially what we did in the the one a little bit ago I'll type in 2x squared and I don't know if typing in the y in front of it is gonna make a difference I think it'll be fine so why don't I do y equals 2x squared minus 21x plus 64 whoops what 
the heck? Plus 64, okay, there it is graphed. No trouble with putting the Y there. And then Y equals 3X plus A. And here's our chance to put a slider, which is what we want. And we want these to intersect in just one point. But notice that that line has a certain angle this time. It's got a slope of three. So it's not just a horizontal line like we saw in that last example. So this one might be a little bit trickier to see, but we know that the A value, um, ooh, this one's actually different. So first of all, we'll slide A so that that line intersects the parabola just once. And you can see it's getting closer and closer. And it seems like negative eight. First of all, it's a whole number, so that's a likely candidate for the answer and of course now we can go up here and we can see that if we zoom in and go this way that these guys intersect in yeah just one point which is right there it looks like 6 10 okay so that is the answer for where they intersect that's good we're on the right track but do not just pick negative 8 and move on because a is negative 8 but they don't ask for a they ask for the value of x so be very very careful this means that at the intersection point, which is what they say here, they intersect at this point x, y. That would be the point that we just found here, 6, 10. And I can just click that and it'll show me that point. So 6, 10. And so the value of x at that intersection point would be 6 and our answer would be c. Okay. So there's a lot of different types of problems we can use to um, use Desmos to find on the SAT. A lot of them have to do with quadratics or systems of equations where we have two lines or graphs intersecting. Um, I just thought of one more that I want to show really, really quickly. And I'm just going to make it up off the top of my head to show you that even a, a simple problem like solving equations um, can be used in Desmos to find the answer. So an example might be if they gave you 4x minus, and let's try to make it really complicated because we want to see the power of what Desmos can do. X minus 7 equals, let's say, X plus 9. Okay, so that might look pretty complicated. And certainly you can solve it. And I'm sure most of you know how to solve that. You would distribute the negative 2. You would get all the X's to one side, get all the constants to the other, and solve for X. But guess what? I put it in Desmos, and I didn't even have to think. Look, this vertical line, forget about the fact that it's vertical. The line crosses the X axis here at negative 5. That means the answer for this problem, the value of x, would just be negative 5. So easy. So even on simple equation problems like this, if you don't want to waste the time to solve it out and risk making a mistake, as long as you just type it in correctly, Desmos will show you the answer because it's going to be where that line crosses the x-axis. So um, yeah, we'll stop here. There's plenty of question types that you can use Desmos for. Hopefully this was a good summary of that. And um, yeah, best of luck to you when you're studying. Feel free to check out our blog where we have good resources on the SAT and on Desmos. You could check out our program Methodize, which maybe you're already using right now. And you can also take a lot of practice tests from the SAT's official website. So good luck in your studying and reach out to us if you have any questions. Hey, thanks for watching. Let us know in the comments if there's any topics that you want to see a video on going forward. Be sure to like and subscribe and check out our channel for more content.